Hey guys, I'm so glad to have you back. Now I've been using my PS4 Slim extensively for the past 3 years. It serves me well and I didn't face any overheating issues. But as a rule of thumb, it's a good idea to change the thermal paste and do a deep clean at least once every 3 or 4 years. Thermal paste and thermal pads tend to lose their properties over time, which might cause serious overheating issues. So for this episode, we'll give our PS4 Slim the love it deserves, we'll do a complete step-by-step -step disassemble and cleaning. I will also replace the thermal paste and the thermal pads, so let's get started. Before we proceed, I want to warn you that disassembling your PS4 will void its warranty. So here I have all that we're going to need, a decent quality thermal paste, since we're going to do a complete disassemble, it's also a good idea to change the thermal pads as well. We also need two types of screwdrivers, Torx and Phillips, some sort of prying tool and a set of pliers would also be helpful. So the first step is to remove the hard drive disk. It's located behind this sliding panel which is easily removed. Once we've done that, we can unscrew the single Phillips screw that holds the hard drive. This screw has the PlayStation trademark triangle square X and circle, which is a nice little easter egg. Next, we can simply slide out the hard drive just like that. Another cool design feature I noticed is that the hard drive is mounted to its bracket with a small rubber bushings, which is really nice and helps eliminate vibrations from the spinning hard drive disk. The next step is to remove the warranty sticker located on the back of the console to access the Torx screw. Now we can pry open the bottom cover. This reveals the metal cover and a whole bunch of screws that we have to unscrew. First, we have to unscrew this Phillips screw located here. Next, we can flip over the PS4 and remove the top plastic cover. Here is the fan assembly, we will get to it as well and clean all the accumulated dust to allow better air circulation. Moving on, we have to remove the power supply which is located here. It's held into place by three Phillips screws. we have to remove this metal cover and now we can just lift the corner of the power supply and remove it and disconnect its cable. Now we can flip over the console and disconnect all the ribbon cables and the Wi-Fi antenna.
you can remove all the screws that hold the metal plate, there are a total of 3 screw types, so you might want to remember where each one goes. Now we can lift the metal cover and we can see all the contact points for the RAM thermal pads. As I said, we'll be changing the thermal pads as well. To remove the motherboard, we have to unscrew the two Phillips screws holding the bracket. We have to remove the fan loop cable and the 4 pin connector. Then we have to slightly pull back and lift the main board. And we can finally take a glance at the PS4's APU. This APU is a single chip that combines an AMD Jaguar 8 core CPU and AMD Radeon based GPU as well as other components such as memory controller and video decoder and encoder. It's an extremely power efficient APU and it's remarkable to see all that power packed in this tiny little main board. Before we move on to changing the thermal paste and the thermal pads, let's first clean the fan and the heatsink from the dust and debris that might have accumulated. There are two Phillips screws that we have to undo. And once we flip over the console, we can gently remove the metal cover that also has the heat sink on it. Next, we can remove the fan. It doesn't look that bad, but still there's quite a bit of fine dust that we'll take care of with our vacuum cleaner and soft bristles brush. Now guys, that we have all the major components taken apart, let's give them a good proper clean and we can reapply the thermal paste and the new thermal pads. The fan is very fragile, so make sure to be as gentle as possible if you're going to use a powerful vacuum cleaner.
Next, we can grab the heat sink and clean the old thermal compound. I'm using a wipe slightly soaked with tropic alcohol. We also have to clean the old excess thermal paste from the APU die. You can see how dried up the old thermal paste is. I guess it was already starting to lose its thermal conductivity properties, so it's a good thing we replaced it in time. You can also use cotton swabs to gently clean off the thermal paste from the hard to get areas. Now, before we reapply the new thermal paste, I wanted to replace all the thermal pads as well. I have selected this brand as they offered a pretty decent quality thermal pads at a reasonable price. Now, this is very important. All PS4s use 1mm thick thermal pads, so you have to absolutely stick with that. If you choose thicker pads, it's a huge downgrade as the chips will retain more heat and be worse off than before. So, definitely go for 1mm thick thermal pads. We got two strips, which should be more than enough. So, let's remove the out pads and replace them with fresh new ones. Just be sure to remove the clear plastic that's on the both sides of the new thermal pads. And finally, the most important bit, reapplying the APU's thermal paste. Normally, a pea-sized dot should be enough, but to ensure an even contact surface, you can spread the thermal paste. Once we are done, we can refit the motherboard. I also took my time and replaced all the degraded thermal pads on the 8 RAM chips. People often tend to neglect the thermal pads as we focus mostly on replacing the thermal paste, but as I said, the thermal pads also degrade over time, so it's necessary to replace them every 3 or 4 years as well. And with that, we are pretty much done. All we have to do is reassemble the console. Make sure to reconnect all the ribbon cables and the Wi Fi antenna. Once we are done with all the screws, we can reconnect the power supply.
Next, you can reinstall the bottom plastic cover. Make sure everything clicks and is nice and tight. Then you can flip the console and screw this metal protective cover. The top cover clicks into place, looks like everything is nice and tight. Don't forget the torque screw hidden behind the warranty sticker and all we have left to do is reinstall the hard drive. So guys, I've set up the PS4 Slim and let's see if we did everything right and if the console actually turns on. It appears that everything is functioning normally so far, but I wanted to do a quick stress test and see if the console overheats and tests the fan noise level. After testing the PS4 Slim with GTA 5 for about one hour, the console remained quite cool and quiet as you can hear. So it looks like we did a pretty good job. With a bit of extra care, we'll be sure that our PS4 Slim will function as intended with no overheating issues. So guys, I hope you found this video helpful, thank you all for watching and see you in the next episode.